September 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 18 through 20 of the Old Testament. The land of buzzing wings is as good as dead, the one beyond the rivers of Cush, that sends messengers by sea who glide over the water's surface in boats made of papyrus. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation of tall, smooth-skinned people, to a people that are feared far and wide, to a nation strong and victorious, whose land rivers divide. All you who live in the world, who reside on the earth, you will see a signal flag raised on the mountains. You will hear a trumpet being blown. For this is what the Lord has told me. I will wait and watch from my place, like a scorching heat produced by the sunlight, like a cloud of mist in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the bud has sprouted and the ripening fruit appears, he will cut off the unproductive shoots with pruning knives. He will prune the trendles. They will all be left for the birds of the hills and the wild animals. The birds will eat them during the summer, and all the wild animals will eat them during the winter. At that time, tribute will be brought to the Lord who commands armies by a people that are tall and smooth-skinned, a people that are feared far and wide, a nation strong and victorious, whose land rivers divide. The tribute will be brought to the place where the Lord, who commands armies, has chosen to reside on Mount Zion. Here is a message about Egypt. Look, the Lord rides on a swift-moving cloud and approaches Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him. The Egyptians lose their courage. I will provoke civil strife in Egypt. Brothers will fight with each other, as will neighbors, cities, and kingdoms. The Egyptians will panic, and I will confuse their strategy. They will seek guidance from the idols and from the spirits of the dead, from the pits used to conjure up underworld spirits and from the magicians. I will hand Egypt over to a harsh master. A powerful king will rule over them, says the sovereign master, the Lord who commands armies. The water of the sea will be dried up, and the river will dry up and be empty. The canals will stink, the streams of Egypt will trickle and then dry up. The bulrushes and reeds will decay, along with the plants by the mouth of the river. All the cultivated land near the river will turn to dust and be blown away. The fishermen will mourn and lament all those who cast a fish hook into the river, and those who spread out a net on the water's surface will grieve. Those who make clothes from comb flax will be embarrassed. Those who weave will turn pale. Those who make cloth will be demoralized. All the hired workers will be depressed. The officials of Zoan are nothing but fools. Pharaoh's wise advisors give stupid advice. How dare you say to Pharaoh, I am one of the sages, one well-versed in the writings of the ancient kings. But where or where are your wise men? Let them tell you, let them find out what the Lord who commands armies has planned for Egypt. The officials of Zoan are fools. The officials of Memphis are misled. The rulers of her tribes lead Egypt astray. The Lord has made them undiscerning. They lead Egypt astray in all she does so that she is like a drunk sliding around in his own vomit. Egypt will not be able to do a thing, head or tail, shoots and stalk. At that time the Egyptians will be like women. They will tremble and fear because the Lord who commands armies brandishes his fist against them. The land of Judah will humiliate Egypt. Everyone who hears about Judah will be afraid because of what the Lord who commands armies is planning to do to them. At that time, five cities in the land of Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to the Lord who commands armies. One will be called the City of the Sun. At that time, there will be an altar for the Lord in the middle of the land of Egypt, as well as a sacred pillar dedicated to the Lord at its border. It will become a visual reminder in the land of Egypt of the Lord who commands armies. When they cry out to the Lord because of oppressors, he will send them a deliverer and defender who will rescue them. The Lord will reveal himself to the Egyptians and they will acknowledge the Lord's authority at that time. They will present sacrifices and offerings. They will make vows to the Lord and fulfill them. The Lord will strike Egypt, striking and then healing them. They will turn to the Lord and he will listen to their prayers and heal them. 
At that time, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will visit Egypt and the Egyptians will visit Assyria. The Egyptians and Assyrians will worship together. At that time, Israel will be the third member of the group, along with Egypt and Assyria, and will be a recipient of blessing in the earth. The Lord who commands armies will pronounce a blessing over the earth, saying, Blessed be my people, Egypt, and the work of my hands, Assyria, and my special possession, Israel. The Lord revealed the following message during the year in which King Sargon of Assyria sent his commanding general to Ashdod, and he fought against it and captured it. At that time, the Lord announced through Isaiah, son of Amoz, Go, remove the sackcloth from your waist and take your sandals off your feet. He did as instructed and walked around in undergarments and barefoot. Later, the Lord explained in the same way that my servant Isaiah has walked around in undergarments and barefoot for the past three years as an object lesson and omen pertaining to Egypt and Cush, so the king of Assyria will lead away the captives of Egypt and the exiles of Cush, both young and old. They will be in undergarments and barefoot with the buttocks exposed. The Egyptians will be publicly humiliated. Those who put their hope in Cush and took pride in Egypt will be afraid and embarrassed. At that time, those who live on this coast will say, Look what has happened to our source of hope, to whom we fled for help, expecting to be rescued from the king of Assyria. How can we escape now? God, in, in our current time, and in the times past as well, it is truly baffling to think that Egypt and Assyria and Israel would talk to each other, <laughs> much less much less worship together, and more importantly, worship you. Yet we do know from Revelation that in chapter 7, it talks about that. It talks about all the nations coming together, and it says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. It just gets really exciting to me that this is how things, I don't want to say end, but this is where everything is heading to so that we can start our worship and glorification of you in heaven. But sometimes, God, it is so hard to even keep our eyes on that when our headlines are all about uh, Syria and Israel and Russia and a uh, president wanting to go to war and then not wanting to go to war and being in wars in so many other countries it's hard to imagine peace I know what it means I've seen it in my own life because you filled my heart with peace that is beyond any understanding and has calmed me so I know it's possible with you all things are possible and and for you to put that calm over all nations and that peace over all nations um, and more importantly that love so that they actually love each other and and would be able to talk to each other but in our our human world where so many people don't know you God where so many people don't know your words where so many people are angry and hurt and filled with evil it's hard to imagine a day where all nations will come together to praise and worship you but you've commanded us to keep our eyes on that of knowing that in the future whether that's this afternoon or <laughs> sometime in the far future that that will happen that eventually in the name of Jesus all knees will bow in heaven and here on earth and every single person will confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord our Savior all giving glory to God the Father now interestingly enough in Philippians it says that every knee should bow in heaven on earth and under the earth even people who have never acknowledged you who say there is no God or believe in a different God or worship idols all people even those filled with just pure evil 
you've said in your word that they will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, giving glory to you, our powerful, our sovereign, our mighty God. God, allow us to keep our eyes on these truths, that eventually the whole world will claim your son as Jesus Christ and will come to worship and glorify you. Now, I realize that that also means that probably not everyone is going to heaven, and you're pretty clear in the Bible about that too, but but it does calm my heart to know that eventually all this fighting and this anger, especially in the name of religion, and whose God is better than someone else's God, or whose freedom, quote unquote freedom, is better than somebody else's, that eventually there'll come a time of peace, of quietness, except for the shouts of glory and the praising in heavens of you, God. I look forward to that time. I kind of wish it was this afternoon. I look forward to that time where I get to worship and glorify you all day long without the interruption of this world and its horrid headlines. In your son's name I pray. Amen.